What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who classic review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the second Doctor Patrick Troughton story, The Crotons. This, I believe, is one of the um, one of the few fairly criticised um, second Doctor stories. I mean, I don't think it's quite as criticised as The Dominators, Underwater Menace, The Space Pirates, things like that. But um, it is, from what I've heard, definitely down there. For most people, it is one of the weaker Troughton stories. Um, and it's interesting because so far, I've pretty much reviewed all of the, pretty much all of the, you know, highly regarded Trout stories so far. I haven't really re um, reviewed one that's been kind of considered not as, you know, not really good. Um, the worst one I've reviewed so far, in my opinion, was the Ice Warriors, and I still gave that a 7.5 out of 10. So, um, yeah, I was interested going into this one to see what it would be like. But anyway, let's get started. This is The Crotons by Robert Holmes. When the TARDIS arrives on the planet of the Gons, the Doctor, Jamie, and Zoe discover a world ruled and enslaved by the Crotons. The brightest Gons are always chosen to serve as companions of the Crotons and are never seen again. The Doctor and his friends decide to put a stop to their rule, but in doing so, inevitably and inadvertently unleash the true power and terror of the Crotons instead. So, nice little thing on the back of the DVD there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly basic sort of story, I guess. But, um, yeah, I was really interested to see what this one will be like. Anyway, let's get started with the cast. So, we've got Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor, who is good in this one. He is definitely good. He has a few pretty silly moments in this one that I do quite like. Um, definitely, I mean, he has the moments like where he says that um, Zoe's a genius and he's kind of irritated by that sometimes. He has the moment at the end where... Um, you know, he's him and Zoe are with the Crotons, and he's trying to, um, he's kind of tricking them, and he's trying to, you know, he, they're telling him to put this headset thing on, because that, you know, fuels their ship, and it means they can do whatever they need to do, um, use his mind for that, but he's kind of, you know, messing around, making sure, you know, to be slow and mess around with things, um, because he has got a plan, you know, he ends up, um, destroying the Crotons by putting the acid into the, the water that they kind of breathe, um, so that whole moment where he's like, you know, he drops the headset and he's like, oh, silly, he's, he's being all silly and, you know, very second doctor and I, I like that very much. Um, so yeah, Troughton in this one, very good indeed. Fraser Hines, uh, Fraser Hines, Fraser Hines as Jamie McCrimmon. Yeah, he's good in this one, he is good. Um, I'm not going to say this is one of his better stories, just for what he does. He gets split up from the Doctor and Zoe for a lot of this story. Um, so he's kind of with the Gons quite a lot in this one. But um, yeah, for what he has, he's good. He has a couple of great moments, you know, at the start when he has a little fight. He fights the um, one of the Crotons as well. Um, and generally just has some good moments in between. You know, he helps the scientists making the acid. Um, so yeah, he has a, a few pretty good moments. But I'm not going to say it's a absolutely standout story for Jamie. Um, then Wendy Padbury as Zoe Harriet's. Um, probably the standout companion for this one, actually. I mean, it's kind of crazy for me to say that because although I've pretty much liked all of the second Doctor's companions that I've seen, Jamie's kind of always been the high point. I think in this one, though, Zoe does kind of take it just about because she's a bit more used in this story, I'd say. Um, definitely her kind of genius, her knowledge, her intelligence showing through quite a lot in this one, which is really good to see. Just with the premise of the story and what it's all about and what's going on, her intelligence plays a part in that quite well. Um, and generally, yeah, she gets good stuff to do. She's not, like, screaming. A couple of times she has, in other stories, been a little bit screamy. She's never been too bad, but, um, yeah, in this story, really good. Um, I think Zoe's definitely the standout. Well, not definitely the standout for me, because Jamie's very good as well. But, um, yeah, she. I think she has stepped it up a notch for this one. I liked her before, but now, yeah, I think she's really good. Alright, so let's get on to the good and the bad, starting off with the good. So Jamie fighting at the beginning, he fights one of the Gons. I can't remember the names of all the Gons, there were so many of them and I wasn't really keeping track. Um, but he fights one of them and pretty much wins the fight, I'd say, because the other guy had a, he had like an axe and Jamie was unarmed, but he managed to kind of whack the axe out of his hand. And basically throw him to the floor. So um, yeah, that was that was a fun little fight scene. Let down a little bit by not no music in the fight scene, but we'll get to that later on. Um, but yeah, that whole the whole fighting thing. Jamie is always cool fighting because, of course, you know with Patrick Trout's Doctor being an older Doctor, he's not really the Doctor that you see running around, well, you see him running around quite a bit, but not really fighting and, you know, doing a lot of those active sort of things. He's more running away. He's one of actually probably the most scaredy cat doctor of them all, I'd say, the second doctor. Um, so it's cool to see Jamie kind of step into that role. He basically has the role that, you know, Ben had before him and, like, 
I guess Stephen before him, and then right at the beginning Ian as well. Um, after Jamie, we didn't really need that sort of companion anymore because John Pertwee, although he was an older actor, he could do a lot of the um, he could do a lot of the you know jumping and fighting and crazy stuff like that. Uh, and then once Tom Baker came in, you know they were getting younger actors. So um, yeah, but Jamie here with the fighting scene very very good. The doctor hypnotizing the girl to sleep, so that girl gets, um, you know, she gets taken by the Crotons, she she is, she becomes a companion of the Crotons and has to go into the machine, um, and whatever happens to her there, she basically, her mind gets all played with, basically, and she goes a bit, goes a bit weird, I suppose, um, so the doctor hypnotizes her with a stopwatch to uh, go to sleep to kind of rest up, I just thought that was a cool little scene because, We've seen the Doctor hypnotising now and again. Um, the third Doctor did it quite a bit. Um, and, um, yeah, I think we've seen it here and there again as well. The Masters does a lot of hypnotising as well, but that's for bad, that's not for good. The Doctor just, you know, he does it to send people to sleep because, you know, for whatever reason, in this case, she needed to rest. So, um, yeah, I thought that was a nice little moment. I mean, you know, not really a whole lot to say about it. The Doctor saying Zoe also being a genius can be irritating, I talked about this before, but it was just a really funny scene because they, the Crotons have this machine, you do this test with this machine, and if your intelligence is, you know, above average good intelligence, um, they let you in and um, can basically use you for their machine, I guess. Um, and if you don't have the intelligence, you either just don't go into the machine, or you do and they just decide to kill you. Um, so when the Doctor and Zoe did this test, Zoe did it first, and she did really good, it was like the highest score ever. And you know, the Doctor was like, oh yes, Zoe, she's she's a genius, but oh, it, it really annoys me. You know, just the Doctor not being the smartest person in the room all the time. Um, and I love that moment as well, where um, Zoe was just not long after that, actually. So he was like, when the Doctor was doing the test, and he was failing at the start, which um, is actually the next thing on my list, the Doctor failing at the Crotons test. Um, when he's failing, Zoe's like, I don't, know why the, I don't know why the Doctor's failing at this, he's almost as smart as me. Somebody's saying that, and a good person, not just, not a villain, a good person, a companion at that, saying that the Doctor is almost as smart as them, I just found that really interesting, like... Well, somebody that is actually, and honestly, probably is just as smart as the Doctor. Um, I don't know if I'd say more. In this situation, she did seem a lot better with that test. Um, but the Doctor did eventually do it. Um, and I love how at the end, after he did it, he got a better score or something. And she was like, this is not a competition, you know. But the Doctor, you know, you know how what he's like. Um, yeah, I just, I thought that was just really funny stuff there um, all together. Jamie attacking the Croton, another pretty cool moment, um, he grabs that like gas thing, I don't exactly know what it was, but that gas weapon that the Crotons were using on people, he grabs that and tries to kill the Croton with it, but it doesn't ultimately do anything to them, it's designed for killing the, the Gons, not the um, not the, the Crotons themselves, so um, yeah, that pretty much backfires on him, but um, it's a fun little moment seeing him, you know, you can tell he's trying to get it there, they've got their back face to him, and he's, you know, talking to them, trying to keep them distracted to grab the weapon, but then ultimately he does attack them, but doesn't really do anything, um, but it's a nice little moment anyway. And then finally for the good, putting acid in the Crotons breathing liquid to dissolve them, I think was really cool. Um, the fact that they have this liquid to breathe, so they are machines, but they're still organic of some kind, I think that's that's actually quite interesting. Very reminiscent of Dialects, which we'll get onto, but um, yeah, um, I thought it was an interesting concept and having the acid, putting the acid into their breathing water, breathing liquid, whatever it was, um, and ultimately suffocating them and then poisoning them and disintegrating them. They literally disintegrated, they melted. Um, I thought it was an interesting, fairly unique way to finish off the, uh, the villain. Alright, so now onto the bad. There are a couple of things I want to talk about, which I've actually briefly touched upon just before. The first one is there's barely any music in this episode, and it makes it feel really bland and rather boring at times. Um, there's a lot of talking in this story, but I, I don't think there's necessarily any more than any other story, but there's just no music. There's literally one thing of music, which is really quiet, that we hear pretty much whenever we see the Crotons, um, other than that though, there's not really any music in this episode at all, and it feels so bland. I find this in classic stories. The classic 60s stories, they either have lots of music that's very repetitive and it gets annoying, or they have no music. 
And this one, it's one of the ones where it has like no music at all. There's fight scenes like with Jamie, um, Jamie's fight scenes and a couple of other fight scenes where it really needed music, just didn't sound right without music. Um, and just generally some of the talking scenes, yeah, you don't need a lot of the talking scenes to have music in the background, but because there were so many talking scenes, it felt like it really dragged not having something just kind of, you know, something to connect with in the background to keep you interested. It was literally just talking. And yeah, the lack of music in this was really a bit of an issue for me. Um, but then the only other thing was that the Crotons feel like they're trying to be the next Daleks. Now, I really felt this. As soon as I heard their voices, I felt this. They sound like Daleks. They don't sound as good as Daleks. The voices aren't done quite as well as Daleks usually are. Um, but they they just feel like Daleks. They're metal on the outside creatures. However, I mean, we don't know what's inside them, but from what we can tell, they breathe this liquid. They are organic inside from what I'm gathering. Um, otherwise, why would they be, you know, breathing this liquid in? Um, so they're organic creatures, from what I can tell, inside a metal shell, like a metal armor sound familiar it's pretty much the Daleks and they they have similar motives to the Daleks just yeah whatever we want to do what we want to do and we'll just kill anyone in our path they have a very similar motive to the Daleks and that doesn't bother me too much because a lot of villains in Doctor Who do have a, a pretty similar sort of you know basic motive um, but the fact that they just kind of they don't really look like the Daleks but in a way they I guess they kind of do because they're this you know kind of big built sort of robotic armor looking thing with a creature inside they have two appendages coming out i suppose you know with the daleks it's like the whisk gun and the plunger with this there's like a grabby arm and uh there's something else on the other side there's something similar um so yeah they, they feel way too much like daleks for me they really do um and i think that lets them down quite a lot Alrighty, so a rating for the crotons um it was a bit of a struggle finding a rating for this one at the moment, I'm going to go with a 6 out of 10. It's definitely my least favorite Trown story. Um, there are things in there that are fun. I think the performances by all the main cast are pretty good. There's a couple of the side casts, you know, the, the Gon, Gons, or whatever you, whatever you call them, that their performances aren't the best, but generally they're pretty good as well. Um, however, this one, just with the lack of music, it really feels like it drags. It feels like it's really stale. Um, there's a lot of talking and not a lot of actual interesting, exciting stuff going on. So because of that, I'm just going to give it a 6 out of 10. It's not terrible, um, but it's definitely not one that I'm going to, you know, go back to and definitely be like, yes, I want to watch that one again. I'll watch it when I eventually do my, you know, my full Doctor Who rewatch, which will be a little while yet, I imagine. But um, other than that, I don't think it's one I'm really going to come back to. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.